Sons of Adelina Pacci, one of the greatest sopranos of the 19th century, is a set of scratchy recordings made when her voice was well past its peak. She was born 150 years ago, and though brought up as an American, bought a castle near Swansea in Wales. There she held private musical evenings in a theater she built especially for the purpose. Tonight's program looks at her life through documentary, drama, and a concert we've recreated in her own theater, just as it might have been presented in 1893, and with the music that was important in her life. By the time Patti moved to Wales in 1879, she was 36 years old and had been the most sought-after singer in the world for half of her life. When she bought Kraginos Castle, it was an ugly Gothic edifice comprising only the central section of what's here today. But it was somewhere she could go to retreat from the world, set in magnificent grounds and with its own boating lake alongside a fast-flowing stream. In fact, it was originally a love nest, which she bought to share with a new man in her life, Ernesto Nicolini. She was caught up in a disastrous marriage to the French Marquis de Co, and Nicolini was also married. So they needed to avoid the prying eyes of the press and public. Together, they changed the place enormously. Patti had an Italianate pleasure garden planted below the castle and a winter garden alongside it. They altered the building itself beyond recognition, and they moved in with a retinue of 75 servants, including 15 dwarves. But history is silent on the question of what they all did. 
Patti and Nicolini were well-matched lovers, both strong-willed, both international singers, and in 1886, they both obtained divorces and married locally. By now, they had known each other for 10 years, since she had seen him on the opera stage singing heroic lead tenor roles. Patti kept a scrapbook, like one we've recreated for the program, containing her mementos, playbills, and photos. She was, in fact, only ever badly reviewed in one opera, Bizet is Carmen, a role which she never repeated. She sang very little in German, mainly favoring the Italian and French composers, and became one of the finest exponents of the bel canto repertoire. She would sing many roles each season, including Violetta in La Traviata, Verdi's Aida, Marta, Rosina in The Barber of Seville, Rossini's Desdemona with her harp, Marie in La Fille du Régiment, Juliette in Gounod's version of Romeo and Juliet, and Marguerite in Faust. Legend has it that she was literally born to bel canto. Her parents were Italian opera singers, and her mother reputedly began giving birth to her as she was singing the aria Casta Diva in a performance of Bellini's Norma. True or not, she was marked out for greatness from an early age. The family moved to New York, but work dried up, and they became desperate for money. Until in 1850, when she was seven, little Adelina did something which was to change all of their fortunes. She stood up in front of her father and sang, note perfect, and without ever being taught, one of the most difficult of all arias, the one she was supposed to have heard at her birth, Casta Diva. <laughs> 